16, verse 30. 1 Kings is in the Old Testament. Chapter 16, verse 30 says, But Ahab, son of Amri, did what was evil in the Lord's sight more than all who were before him. And so King Ahab, this is the 19th consecutive king of Israel. The 19th consecutive king of Israel. And this is the 19th consecutive evil king of Israel. And scripture tells us in chapter 16, verse 30, that King Ahab is the most evil of all other kings. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight more than all who were before him. And so let's look at chapter 17, the next chapter in verse 1. Chapter 17, beginning in verse 1. Now Elijah the Tishbite from the Gilead settlers said to Ahab, As the Lord, God of Israel, lives in whose presence I stand, there will be no dew or rain during these years except by my command. Now Elijah has three root words. The word Elijah has three root words. My God, Jehovah. My God, Jehovah. What a name to have that that my God is the one true and living God. Elijah was a powerful prophet in the northern kingdom of Israel. He was a man of God who spoke on behalf of God. That's the the, the official title of a prophet, if you will, or description uh, of their title, prophet. A man of God who spoke on behalf of God. And so in in this this, uh, biblical narrative, what we find in, in 1 Kings is Elijah the powerful prophet speaking on behalf of God to the, 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 the most evil king, King Ahab. And what does he say to the king? There will be no dew or rain during these years except by my command. Now, now just for a moment, just put yourself in Elijah's position, right? I, I don't know. If, I wouldn't want to be in Elijah's position, but let's, just for fun, let's just kind of do that. I mean, here, here you are, a prophet of God speaking on behalf of God, to an evil king. And you're basically telling this king who oversees this entire country, you're, you're telling the evil king, hey, uh, there's not going to be any kind of rain unless I say so. Can, can you imagine being Elijah in that moment? Can you imagine being Elijah in, in that moment? He says, there will be no dew or rain during these years except by my command. Now, this is one of the most prophetic things that, that could have been, been spoken in, in this time. Israel was agriculturally driven. And so what, what no rain means is the economy shuts down. Without rain, the, 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 the crops cannot produce. There's a complete drought. And so Elijah, the man of God, is speaking to King Ahab, evil king, making this declaration. Look at verse 2 and 3. Then the word of the Lord came to him, leave here, turn eastward and hide at the Wadi Cherith where it enters the Jordan. Leave here, turn eastward and head to the Wadi Cherith or, or Wadi Kareth. Now the word Kareth means cut down or cut off. So, so the Lord speaks to Elijah and says, hey, you've just made this, this prophecy to the king. Now head to the Wadi Kareth. Now the word Wadi means a brook. So head to the Kareth Brook. Now the Kareth Brook was located in the Jordan Valley. And so the Lord tells Elijah to turn, to leave, to head towards the Kareth Brook in the Jordan Valley, to go hide in the valley. Today, as I said, we're talking about different seasons in our lives. And today, in particular, we're talking about the valley. The valley. The valley is a place of of battles. Battles take place in the valley. The valley is a place of isolation. Most people want the mountaintop experience, but the valley is a place of isolation. The valley is a place of desperation. The valley is a place of hiding. And so the Lord tells Elijah to leave and to head towards 
the Kareth Brook in the Jordan Valley. One of my takeaways from, from the scripture is that we are sent to the brook in the valley to find complete satisfaction in the Lord. We're sent to the brook in the valley to find complete satisfaction in, in the Lord. One of the things that happens while we're in the valley is isolated pain. I want you to write that down, isolated pain. One of the things that we experience in the valley is isolated pain. A.W. Tozer said this, It is doubtful that God can bless a man greatly until he has hurt him deeply. Now, that doesn't sound that exciting, right? Can we just agree? I, I like, I don't know about the breaking. You know, I want the blessing. I don't know about the breaking, right? I don't know about the break. But, but without the breaking, we, we can experience the blessing. There, there's beauty that comes from brokenness. Beauty that comes from brokenness. Oftentimes, what happens in our lives is, is rather than God being the number one priority and God leading our lives, we tend to flip the script and say, no, I got this, God. I'll call you when I need you. And so there's beauty that comes from brokenness. And, and Elijah is finding himself in the Jordan Valley. And there's a, there's a brook that, that, that's running through this Jordan Valley where he can drink from, where he can find that complete satisfaction. And the Lord, beauty comes from the brokenness. But it's that isolated pain that we experience in the valley. And the pain in the process is necessary for our personal growth. I want you to hear that today. The pain in the process is necessary for our personal growth. The valley is often painful. It's a painful experience. When we feel like we're alone, when we feel like no one cares, when we feel like, God, what are you doing with my life? I'm just wasting away here. What happens in our lives is in the valley, we begin to question God about everything. Rather than saying, God, what do you want to do in me? Here's the truth today. That God has to do a work in you before he can do a work through you. I want you to hear that today. God has to do a work in you before he can do a work through you. There, there's a breaking that's taking place. There's, there's a, a, a painful uh, experience that, that Elijah is, is walking through, living in, while he's here in the valley. Isolated pain. Look at verse 4. You are to drink from the wadi. I have commanded the ravens to provide for you there. So he proceeded to do what the Lord commanded. Elijah left and lived at the Wadi Kareth where it enters the Jordan. The ravens kept bringing him bread and meat in the morning and in the evening, and he would drink from the Wadi. After a while, the Wadi dried up because there had been no rain in the land. I find this just fascinating. That the Lord sends Elijah to this valley. He sends Elijah to this place of isolation. And what does he do? How does he provide for Elijah? He sends a bird. He sends a raven to provide food. He sends the, the, this, this brook is present providing water. Even in the valley, the Lord is taking care of Elijah. He, even in the valley, he, he's finding uh, complete satisfaction in the Lord. The valley starts with isolated pain. But that isolated pain should lead, should lead to total dependence. Hear, hear me today. The isolated pain should lead to total dependence. Dependence. What, what do we see in verses 4 through 7? We, we see that the Lord is, is providing as Elijah is depending on the Lord. The Lord is providing his every need. I love the story of George Mueller. Do, do you know the name George Mueller? Uh, in 1870, George Mueller was overseeing five large orphan homes with 
close to 2,000 orphans occupying these homes. A fascinating story in England, 1870. And it was by prayer. Hear me. It was by prayer. It was by prayer. George Mueller didn't have a capital campaign expert. You know, he didn't have a grant writer. He didn't have any of these things. It was by prayer. It was by prayer alone. And he provided the food. He provided the clothing. He provided the housing. And he provided the schooling for these children whose parents had died. It's total dependence on the Lord. Total dependence on the Lord. See, see, listen, God taught Elijah to depend on him daily for food and water in the valley. Don't, don't miss this. We, we can't look at the mountaintop experience, which we'll look at next week, without first looking at the valley. That God is doing something in Elisha, in the valley. There's a total dependence in God. And I want to encourage you to ask this question personally. What am I trusting God for right now in the valley? What am, what am I trusting God for right now in this valley? God, what are you doing in, in me? How are you shaping me? How are you molding me? How are you providing for me? How are you setting me up for, for, for what you want to do through me right here, right now in the valley? What are you trusting God for? Out of all the needs throughout our lives, what are, you, what are you trusting God for? Some of you say, Man, but, but Tim, you just don't know this, this, this financial shortage, the financial strain in my life and in my home. And it's this electric bill, and it's coming, man. It's coming. It's, it's coming every month, right? And, uh, and I just don't. I, we're, man, we're just struggling at the moment. What are you trusting God for? Maybe it's a new job. You're like, man, I, I, I'm just, I, this, my season's over in this place. And, and, and what, what, are you, what are you trusting for? What are you trusting God for? Right here, right now, in the valley. Look at Psalm chapter 84 just for a moment with me. Psalm 84, verse 5 and 6. Psalm 84, verse, verse 5 and 6. Scripture says, happy are the people whose strength is in you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you. That word happy, uh, other translations read blessed. Blessed are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on Pilgrimage, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. Pilgrimage meaning referring to, to uh, uh, the city of God, uh, uh, God himself, whose hearts are set on God. Blessed are the people whose strength is in you. I want you to hear this today, that you were created to depend on God. You were created to depend on God. Have you ever thought about the, 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 that next, next breath that you just breathed in? It was a dependence on God. You ever thought about that next step that you take? It's a dependence on, on God. The, the, the things that you're seeing, it's, it's, it's a dependence on, on God. This very life is a dependence on God. Blessed are the people whose strength is in you. I want you to know today that if you're feeling like you have no more strength left, I want you to know there's a power that's available today comes from the living God. Total dependence on Him. I love how Paul articulates. He, he says it this way. When I'm weak, your strength is made perfect. I, I wonder when, when people look at you, what, what do they see in you? Uh, they, they see a person that's living in, in, you know, presently in the, in the valley and they're wondering, how are you still existing? It's the very power of God. In me and his provisions providing for, for me. Notice the next part in verse 5. Hearts are set on pilgrimage. Once again, referring to, 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 to God himself. Hearts are set on, on God. Listen, your current situation, your current circumstance may be in the valley. But fix your heart on God. Listen closely. Your current circumstance, say it again, your current circumstance may be in the valley. Fix your heart on God. You may be saying today, I, I just feel absolutely overwhelmed. Fix your heart on, on God. You, you may be saying, my soul is aching. Fix your heart 
on God. You may say, my, my emotions are just racing. They're running like crazy. Fix your heart on God. On God, you might be saying there's just too much to do, Tim. You just don't know my life, and, and, I, and I don't, but, but, but you don't know my life. You know, fix your heart on God today. You might be saying today, my relationship, my marriage is in a bad place. For the married folks today, fix your heart on God. Christmas is coming and, and all the anxiety often that it brings for because we take our eyes off of Jesus, I believe. I, you know, can I just tell you today, fix your heart on God. Fix your heart on God. Look at verse 6. The psalmist says, as they pass through the valley of Baca. Everyone say Baca. Come on, everybody say Baca. The, the word, word baka means tears, mourning, loss. Tears, mourning, loss. And I love how the psalmist describes it in verse 6 as they pass through the valley of baka. As they pass through the, these moments of isolated pain and the painful process that is taking place. As they pass through the valley of baka. I want you to know today, listen, I want you to know that you may be in the valley, but the valley is not your final destination. I want you to hear that today. I want you to be encouraged by that today. You may be in a valley today, but the valley is not your final destination. You are passing through. You are passing through. That's how David Describes it in Psalm 23, even though I walk through the, the valley of the shadow of death. Do you hear those words? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why, why can he say that with such confidence? Because he continues on by stating that his God is for him. And his God is fighting for him. His God is ever present, has never left him nor forsaken him. I want you to hear that today, those that are in the valley, that, that you are walking through the valley, that our God, the one true and living God, is with you, walking with you through the valley. Psalm 84, verse 6, closes with. They make it a source of spring water. Even the autumn rain will cover it with blessings. Uh, listen, today there are blessings that can only be experienced in the valley. I want you to hear that today. There are blessings that can only be experienced in the valley. Uh, so many times in our life, man, we, we want to avoid the, the valley. Uh, can we just be honest for a moment? We want to just avoid the valley. It's, it's uncomfortable. It's painful. It, it hurts. It, it takes years away from my life. I mean, all the things that we could say, right? Uh, we just want to avoid the, the valley. But, but often what God does is something so beautiful in the valley. It's a part of your story. I want you to hear that today. No matter what you've walked through, the valley is, is part of your story. It's part of God shaping you, doing a work in you so that he can do a work through you. Give God praise, honor, and all the glory for the work that he has either done in the valley or he's currently doing in the valley so that you can live a life that brings him glory and honor after the valley. Look back to 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Get up, go to Zarephath. That belongs to Sidon and stay there. Look, I have commanded a woman who is a widow to provide for you there. To provide for you there, pause just for a moment. In the valley, we 
experience isolated pain. And that isolated pain leads us to total dependence on the Lord. And the total dependence on the Lord leads us to unconditional obedience in the Lord. Hear, hear me today. In the valley, we experience isolated pain. But that isolated pain leads to total dependence in the Lord. And that total dependence in the Lord leads to unconditional obedience to the Lord. After the book brook dried up, Elijah trusted God to, to move him to Zarephath. Trusted God to move him. He had provided for him. He had done a work in him. It's time to move. It's time to experience the supernatural power of God. Verse 10, so Elijah got up and went to Zarephath. So he got up and went to Zarephath. Some of you in the valley, and your valley season is over. It's time to get up and to move on. So Elijah got up and went to Zarephath. When he arrived at the city gate, there was a widow gathering wood. Elijah called to her and said, please bring me a little water and a cup and let me drink. Uh, verse 11, as she went to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a piece of bread in your hand. Look at verse 12. But she said, as the Lord your God lives, I don't have anything baked, only a handful of flour in the jar and a bit of oil in the jug. Just now, I am gathering a couple of sticks in order to go prepare it for myself and my son so we can eat it and die. Then Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a small loaf from it and bring it out to me. Afterward, you, you make some for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord God of Israel says, the, the flour jar will not become empty and the oil jug will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the surface of the land. God had done a work in Elijah in the valley. And when he spoke, it was time for Elijah to unconditionally obey God, to get up and to move to Zarephath and be used by God to step in at just the right time. And I wonder who God has placed in your life. That God's calling you to get up and to step in out of unconditional obedience to the Lord. To be used by God in such a way that brings Him glory and honor. I wonder today, is there a dry brook in your life? God is using to lead you to take a step of faith. And can I encourage you today? Take the step toward unconditional obedience. Take the step of faith today. Take, take the step. You, you can take the step, listen, with the assurance that you are not alone. I want you to hear that today. You can, you can take the step of faith with the assurance that God is right there, present with you. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23 is our anchor, going to be our anchor, kind of our, our, our foundational verse, if you will, for, for, this, for this series. And Matthew chapter 1, verse 23 is a prophecy that was given hundreds of years prior. And it came to fruition, it came to fulfillment with the birth of our Savior Jesus. And do you see the scripture? See, the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which is translated God is with us. God is with us. I want you to hear that today. And even in your darkest moment, in your darkest valley, be encouraged. God is with you. God is with you. He, he often has to do a work in us before he can do a work through us. I don't know which where you land today, 
you're, you're in the first part of the valley of the isolated pain. Perhaps you, 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 you've moved on from the isolated pain to total dependence on the Lord. Or, or maybe you're at the place at the end of the valley of unconditional obedience. Wherever you, wherever you fall to, today, listen. Be encouraged that God is with you, that God has not forgotten you, that God has not abandoned you, that God cares about you more than you will ever know. Moms, you, you know what I'm talking about when, when you tell your children, I love you more than You'll ever know. You, you, you know. Can you connect with that just for a moment? You know what I'm talking about. They have no clue what they're talking about, what, what you're talking about. They have just no clue. But I love you more than you'll ever know. As much as you love your, your children, can you just hang with me? Our Heavenly Father loves you and your children more. Loves you and your children more. God is, is with you. God is with you. Would you bow your heads? Would you close your eyes? All across this place, would you just ask? God, is, what is my response? What is my response? And some of you just need to hear that, 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 that word of encouragement that God is with you. Some of you need just to celebrate it, even though it sounds odd. You need to celebrate the pain that you've been through and endured. That the Lord has done a work inside of you to take you and use you in ways you could have never imagined. I want you to hear today that God's not done with you. Man, you, you, you say, Tim, you don't know, man, I've missed it. You don't know my failings, my mistakes. Listen, truth be told, I don't need to know those things. But as we look to the cross, what we discover is that the Lord, our God, He took all of our failings, all of our mistakes, all of our sin, and nailed them to the cross. So that we could be forgiven and set free. I don't know who needs to hear this today. I don't know if any of this even is connected with your heart. But it's time to walk out of the valley. It's time to get up and head to your Zarephath. There's somebody waiting in your Zarephath that God's calling you to minister in a way that only you can minister to. Would you allow Him to take all the pain? And turn it into something beautiful. Would you totally depend on Him? And completely, unconditionally be obedient to Him? So Lord Jesus, 
we thank you. And we praise you for your word. The power of your, your word. Lord, thank you that we, we can stand with confidence today because our confidence is not found in, in us, it's found in you. Thank you, Lord. You've never given up on us, even though people have given up on us and people will continue to give up on us. You've never given up on us because you're always with us. You've never left us, Lord. Thank you for the promise of your word. Thank you, Lord, that you've always provided for us. Even, even in the moments where, where we haven't acknowledged your provisions, Lord, you have still provided. So, Lord, would you take us? Would you use us? For your glory and honor. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us. We praise you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Church, we're going to continue to worship God through giving of tithes and offerings. And as those offering plates come by, if you fill out the Connect card, would you just place it in the offering plate as it goes by? Would you, would you place that Connect card in the offering plate as it goes by? I want to, I want to encourage you, if you didn't receive one of these December reading plans, uh, Pastor Rolly and Victor, they'll have these in the back. I want to encourage you to take one of these and read with us this month. Read one chapter in Luke starting today. And here's the whole point, to get to know Jesus more intimately. That's the whole point, to get to know Jesus more intimately. And so I want to challenge you. Maybe you need to wake up 10 minutes earlier. Maybe you need to take some of your lunch break. Your, I don't know, maybe before you go to bed. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know your life. But, but can I just encourage you? This is not wasted time. Getting to know Jesus, this is fruitful time. And so can I just challenge, I, 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 this is the challenge for the church this month. Take one chapter and read, read one chapter each day leading up to Christmas Eve. Leading up to Christmas Eve. As we're talking about Christmas Eve, I want to talk about, as, as we close today, a Christmas Eve Eve. And so on your seats, you, there's this card, Christmas Eve Eve. There are plenty more of these cards in, in the lobby on the tables. And so I want to encourage you just to take handfuls, take them, take them to your work. Man, hand them out to your neighbors, uh, you, you, your family, your friends, and, and get your invite on, man. Get your invite on for Christmas Eve Eve. It's going to be a, a, a powerful worship experience. It's at 7 p.m. on Monday, December 23rd. Listen, it's a family-style worship, meaning there's no kids' environments. Uh, however, all of our kids... We'll be singing on the stage with the band for, for one of the songs. And uh, so that's going to be exciting. They're going to be working uh, um, on the song that they're singing with the band on Christmas Eve Eve. And uh, on Sundays, they're going to be working on that. And so that's, uh, that's happening Christmas Eve Eve. That's Monday, December 23rd. Uh, there's going to be candle lighting, uh, lots of songs, scripture reading. It's going to be a great time of worship. Ciders, coffee, cookies, all that happening, uh, opening up at 6.30 uh, and then this will kick off at 7. It's a great, great, great thing, great opportunity to worship Jesus. And, and then the other card, the other card that, uh, that, that's on your seat is another invite for, for kids specifically. It talks about what's happening uh, each Sunday in December. And, uh, and so, man, I, take a handful of these at your kids' check-in and uh, send them home uh, or, or send them to school with your kids or, or you know, the, the friends that they play with in the neighborhood. And, uh, and so that's, that is, uh, that's happening there. Hey, as we close it out today, I um, just want to show you a picture we, we kind of shared last uh, week 
that uh, we have officially broken ground on the property. A group, small group of people met at 8.30. Yeah, that's exciting, man. A small group of people met at 8.30 uh, on, on uh, yesterday, on Saturday, to pray. And, uh, and so uh, that's going to happen every Saturday at 8.30. Uh, and so I want to invite you to come out and just pray um, uh, 8.30 to, to 9.00 with the group that's uh, meeting at the property to pray. They're praying for the construction process, praying for the financial needs that are uh, still pending. And so uh, that's a picture, though, of the, the, uh, the, the, the pad where the building will go. And so we praise God for that being cleared and concrete work starting to, tomorrow. And so that's exciting. It's very exciting. Um, with, that, with that, we are launching, kind of today is a soft launch, but we're launching Build This Home campaign. Build This Home campaign campaign. There, there's some funds that, that uh, still need to be raised to complete the, uh, the, 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 the whole project. And uh, so we're launching Build This Home campaign today. And one of the first, uh, uh, one of the first uh, projects is Giving Tuesday. Everybody know about Giving Tuesday? It's this Tuesday, right? Giving Tuesday is this Tuesday, December 3rd. It's just a national thing, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but but uh, Giving Tuesday, it, it's a thing. Hashtag it, hashtag Giving Tuesday, and you'll see it is indeed a thing. If you're on Facebook, we're doing a Facebook fundraiser, and uh, on Giving Tuesday, Facebook is matching funds, and uh, and so you can see the fundraiser that's going on. Uh, if you're connected with, with me on Facebook, if you're not connected with me, let's get connected. Love to connect with you uh, through Facebook, and uh, and so... Uh, here's where we need you. We need you to invite people to the fundraiser. We need you to share the fundraiser. Several of you have given to the fundraiser already, and so we praise God for that. And uh, I think we have a goal of 7,000 uh, for that uh, Giving Tuesday Facebook fundraiser. So share it, invite people to it, give to it. God is good. We continue the series, Is God With Us, next Sunday. God bless you.